The FBI is warning the Chinese government could use TikTok to gather the data of millions of Americans. Officials are outlining worldwide threats to Washington in front of a Senate hearing that's taking place at the moment. TikTok's alleged security risks are further fueling speculation. The Chinese-owned app could be banned in the US. Could they use TikTok to control data on millions of users? Uh, yes. Could they use it to control the software on millions of devices given the opportunity to do so? Yes. Could they use it to drive narratives, uh, like to divide Americans against each other? For example, let's say China wants to invade Taiwan to make sure that Americans are seeing videos arguing why Taiwan belongs to China and why the U.S. should not intervene? Yes, and I would make the point on that last one in particular that we're not sure that we would see many of the outward signs of it happening if it was happening. That's alarming. Joining us now, the Shadow Home Affairs Minister, Karen Andrews. Uh, Karen, good morning. Thanks uh, for your time this morning. What's your thoughts on that, 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 that exchange? They can control data, they can control software, and they can also drive narratives if they want. Yes, look, it's very concerning. I listened to some of the evidence given by the head of the FBI, Christopher uh, Ray, and he went into quite a level of detail about his concerns in relation to data collection, basically narratives that could be forced uh, through through the collection of information and, and data, but certainly with the uh, algorithms that are, are used. So he went into quite a bit of detail, which is very concerning. Now, what I would say is that uh, from the work that James Patterson has done. We know that uh, there's a pretty ad hoc approach to TikTok through our government agencies and departments. I think the first thing to do is to ban TikTok on any um, any devices that are held by uh, government officials and, and including MPs and senators. So we should not have access to that on our phones and we should be very closely monitoring um, the data that uh, has been collected so far from those individuals who do have TikTok uh, on their on mm. their devices, so that's the first step. But there there really needs to be some serious investigation work done, and then um, some work done to make sure that individuals here particularly uh, younger people, understand how much of their data is, um, is now available effectively by the Chinese government. Mm. So can it be used then as a propaganda tool? And if, sh if so, wh why ban... I mean, I don't know if this is never going to happen, but why, why stop it at, 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 at government-owned or held devices? Why not extend that ban across the board? Yeah, well, the evidence is showing that, yes, it can be used to force narratives uh, as well. And, and Christopher Ray gave that evidence uh, to the Senate inquiry in the United States. So, yes, I think the first step is to, to look at um, government agencies and departments. But, yes, I think there needs to be a much broader consideration of the use of TikTok in Australia. Now, unfortunately, many people don't understand uh, the, the amount of data that is available out there and how it can be used and misused. So there's an education component to um, that, but really the government needs to look at what it is going to do to step in to protect Australians. As things are at the moment, there's uh, there's no ban in place, uh, you know, and James Patterson, I've spoken to him many times about mm. this, and, uh, and mm. the government does appear to be very slow in responding to this. How much of a threat to our national security can TikTok or could TikTok be? Uh, look, it could be a huge threat to our national security. And again, that came out in evidence in the United States. Yeah. So it is widely regarded as a national security risk. And that's why it's uh, <laughs> disappointing to say the absolute least that uh, the government here in Australia has uh, done very little to, to act and to protect uh, our devices and to make sure that they're communicating to the mm. Australian people a, what they're doing, but B, how to protect themselves. I mean, it's extraordinary that this is taking place in the United States now. And, and James, I had him on last week, mm. and he said he wrote to the Home Affairs mm. Minister eight months ago about this, and, uh, and there's still, there still hasn't been mm. a change. Uh, Karen, almost out of time, but I do want to get your response to a, a story that our, uh, Liv Caisley broke yesterday, that the RBA governor got a taxpayer-subsidised half-price mortgage to buy his home. He's paid his home off. Mm. Good luck to him. But when he's turning up the heat mm. on homeowners now, does that show he's out of touch? 
Look, I think it was a really interesting uh, a story that um, I'll be interested to see myself how this un unfolds. Look, many people, on the one hand, many people do get a benefit um, from their, their employer, but in this case, you've got to look at it and say, well, this is actually a benefit that's been funded by the, the taxpayer, and in the circumstances, is this an appropriate uh, perk of employment? Should those, I mean, 11 staff still enjoy that perk. Should that be allowed? Mm -hmm. Look, I think it needs to be uh, looked at, as do many, uh, many other uh, perks that uh, are part of people's terms and conditions of employment, to see whether or not that is something that should be allowed to, uh, to continue. But for those individuals who have accessed it, as I said, on the one hand, that is a term and condition of their employment. But for all those people out there who are doing it very, very tough at the um, at, at the moment, will they see that it's a good idea? And I think they'd probably say no. Okay, Karen Andrews, uh, thanks for your time. We'll talk to you again soon.